7.1.1 this ethanoic acid a weak acid or a strong acid give a reason for the answer right so i'm gonna say it's a weak acid right why am i saying it's a weak acid i'm saying it's a weak acid because it's an ingredient of household vinegar which you have probably used at some point of time and if you pour a bit on yourself you don't get bent in any way so it's a weak acid right but then when they say give a reason they don't want you to say that they now want the technical reason why it's considered a weak acid so what is the technical reason it considered a weak acid because it dissociates partially in water right that's the reason they're looking for so you're gonna say uh, dissociates partially in water and then we have 7.1.2 uh, it says an ethanoic acid solution has a pH of 3.85 at 25 degrees Celsius. Calculate the concentration of the hydronium ions H3O plus in the solution. So fine. We know that pH is equals to minus log and then H3O plus and then the pH is given to us as 3.85 so 38 3.85 will be equals to minus log uh, concentration of h3o plus and then we do we multiply everything by minus one right so we're gonna get minus 3.85 equals to log ho3 plus and then we can say that uh, the concentration of H3O plus is equal to 10 to the power minus 3,85. And then if I put that in my calculator, I'm getting 1.41 times 10 to the minus 4 moles per decimeter cube. And then uh, we have 7.1.3, which says sodium ethanoid ACH3COONA, right, forms when ethanoic acid reacts with sodium hydroxide. And then it says, will the pH of sodium ethanoid solution be greater than 7, less than 7, or equal to 7? It's definitely going to be greater than seven why is it greater than seven we know now that ethanoic is a weak acid right so we have a weak acid uh, being combined with a strong base because sodium hydroxide is a strong base right so if you combine these two you're gonna get a base right uh, you will have a ph of greater than seven so if instead you had a strong acid and a weak base then the pH would be less than 7. And then we have uh, 7.1.4, which says, explain the answer to question 7.13 with the aid of a balanced chemical equation. So let's put sodium ethanoid in water and see what happens. So we have CH3COONA uh, plus H2O and then this is supposed to give us something right so because we say in that this is a base right uh, because it has a ph of greater than seven uh, so this has to be an acid so a base will accept a proton right and then the acid will donate uh, a proton consequently so if ch3 coo and a accepts a proton we're gonna have ch3 cooh plus naoh
So we can see that we have hydroxide here and as a consequence the pH will be basic. So let's move forward and go to 7.2. 7.2 says household vinegar contains 4.52% of ethanoic acid. Um, CH3COOH by volume, right? And then 1.2 gram of impure symbol of calcium carbonate is added to 25 centimeter cube of household vinegar. On completion of the reaction, the excess ethanoic acid in the household vinegar is neutralized by 14.5 cm3 of a sodium hydroxide solution of concentration 1 mole dm3 and then we have a balance equation for the reaction that's a mouthful but let's see what we can do so we have 7.2.1 saying calculate the number of moles of the unreacted ethanoic acid so it is said that uh, the excess ethanoic acid is neutralized by uh, sodium hydroxide, right? So we're going to have NaOH, uh, this NaOH neutralized uh, the ethanoic acid. Uh, but then we are told that the volume that does the neutralization is 14.5 um, deci, no, actually centimeter cube, and then the concentration was one mole uh, decimeter cube per decimeter cube right so what we can do we can find the number of moles of NaOH related to the number of moles of ethanoic acid and we're basically done right so from here we can see that the number of moles is equal to the concentration multiplied by the volume we know the concentration fully well that is one and the volume is 14.5 divided by a thousand by now you should know why i'm divided by a thousand i'm converting uh the decimeter uh, the centimeter cube to decimeter cube so if i divide that by a thousand uh, it's giving me 0 0.0145 moles right so now i want you to look at something the balancing coefficient of our ethanoic acid is one and the balancing coefficient of our NOH is one. So the number of moles of NaOH is equal to the number of moles of CH3COOH and then that will be 0 0.0145 moles. But what if the balancing coefficients were not the same? I've solved a similar problem with that kind of a situation so i would advise you to go and check it out so uh moving forward uh, we have 7.2.2 .2, which says calcium uh, carbonate uh, reacts with the ethanoic acid according to the following balance equation right and then it says calculate the percentage of calcium carbonate in the impure sample if one centimeter cube of household vinegar has a mass of one gram. So what this question basically wants us to do is calculate uh, the percentage purity of calcium carbonate, right? And then when we calculate in percentage purity, we'll always end up saying uh, the percentage of uh, the whatsoever we have, right? Is equal to the pure divided by the impure uh, and multiplied by a hundred we have the pure it's 1.2 gram is given to us and now what we need to determine is the pure right but then how would we go ahead and do that we need to find the number of moles of ethanoic acid that reacted and by using that we can then relate the number of moles using the balancing coefficients and consequently found the mass of the calcium carbonate so for the uh, number of moles of uh, ethanoic acid that reacted we still need the mass initial and to determine that we're gonna say that the mass is equals to 4.52 divided by 100 multiplied by 25 
Why am I saying that this will give us the mass? Because usually the mass is the number of moles by the molar mass. So look at this. Uh, this is the percentage of ethanoic acid in household vinegar, right? And then we are told in the equation that one centimeter cube, uh, we can take it as one gram, right? <clears throat> so that's exactly what I'm doing there. So we're going to have 4.52 divided by 100 multiplied by 25, which is equal to um, 1.13 uh, grams, right? And from this 1.13 grams, uh, we can then calculate the number of moles of ethanoic acid initial, right? So we're going to say the number of moles is equal to the mass, obviously, divided by the molar mass, which will be 1.13 uh, divided by uh, the molar mass of carbon is 12 uh, plus 3 for the 3 hydrogens plus 32 for the oxygens plus one right so let me punch this in my calculator real quick and see what i get so divided by 12 plus 3 plus 32 plus 1 uh, plus 12 again i just missed the carbon there and this is giving me 0 0.0188 uh, moles right so now because we have number of moles in e initial right and we have number of moles uh, that are in excess, right? That didn't react. We can then calculate the number of moles uh, that reacted. So we're going to say number of moles that uh, reacted equals to uh, number of moles initial uh, minus number of moles in excess, right? So the number of moles that uh, reacted will be equal to the number of moles initial which is 0 0.0188 minus number of moles in excess, uh, which we calculated in 7.2.1, right? That is 0 0.0145. And then let me put that in my calculator real quick. That is 0 0.043. So now we can determine uh, the mass of uh, the calcium carbonate, right? So we can say that the number of moles of uh, our acid uh, divided by the number of moles of our base basically is equal to what the balancing coefficient of uh, the acid is 2, right? And for the base is 1. So we're going to say that uh, the number of moles of the base equals to uh, 0 0.043 divided by 2. Uh, if I do that, let me see what I get. It's giving me 0 0.00215. So from that 0 0.00215, uh, we can calculate the mass of calcium carbonate, right? So we're going to see that the mass is given by the number of moles multiplied by uh, the molar mass. So this will be 0 0.00215. And what's the molar mass of calcium? Uh, calcium what? Calcium carbonate. Uh, that's a hundred, right? Which is zero point two one five, right? So now we can come back to our uh, formula for the percentage purity, right? And then for the impure, we can then put one point two, and then for the pure, we can put um, zero point two one five. And then if we multiply that, we're going to get uh, about 18.08, right? Or something somewhere there.